today I'm going to show you um, how you would repair a split in a seam if you don't have access to a sewing machine. So there's just a tiny little break in the stitching. And I'm going to turn them inside out so I can see what we're dealing with. So the first thing I need to do is just get rid of all these loose threads. So I'm going to use this for the back. I'm just going to gently cut those threads away and then I can see that I've got this small break in the stitching here. So I need to find a thread which is as close as possible to the garment. You need to unfurl them and lay them on the fabric. So I can see actually that this, um, this green colour here is the closest, so that's the one that I'm going to use. What I have to do is just secure the um, machine stitching just to make sure that doesn't unravel any further. So I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to bring my needle up but from the back through exactly where that last machine stitch is. And then I'm gonna come back after the next stitch and that will stop them unraveling any further. Now for the rest of the way, for the gap here, I'm actually gonna use back stitch. So I'm gonna stitch forwards, come up from the back and then go down backwards. And I'll just work my way along, trying to keep my stitches the same size as the machine stitches until I get to the end of the break in the thread. Right, once I get to the other side where the thread is broken, I'm gonna come up the same as I did at the beginning and I'm gonna stitch over the top is just to secure them. And then when my needles are on the back, I'm just gonna turn this over and inside the seam allowance, so not on the actual leg of the garment, but in here near the overlocking, I'm just gonna do a series of short stitches, one on top of the other. Snip that off this background and there you go good as new you can't actually see that anything's happened The materials you will need are sweatpants, elastic, scissors, a safety pin, pins or clips, a seam ripper, a needle and thread, and a sewing machine. Exposed elastic and hidden elastic are going to be the most common bands you will see, so today I'm going to be demonstrating on both. For exposed elastic, you're going to cut a strip of elastic to the size of your waist. To do this, wrap the elastic where you would like the pants to sit and pull it so it's snug. Cut the elastic strip. You want it to be tight but not constricting, and remember that elastic stretches slightly when you start wearing it regularly. Cut the old elastic out of your pants. You can cut just below where the old seam is, or if you're worried about fraying, you can cut just above it. I'm going to cut just below the seam because I don't want the fabric to be too thick. Pin the new elastic to the sweatpants with about a half inch of fabric overlapping. You want to make sure the elastic is stretched out fully, so pin at the beginning and end of your band and then at the front and the sides. I am putting my elastic on the outside of the pants, but if you want, you can fold down the edge of your pants slightly and put the elastic on the inside. Start sewing the elastic with a zigzag, overcasting, or joining stitch. Wherever you start when you get back to that place, sew a couple of stitches overlapping because you won't be able to backstitch at the beginning. Make sure that when you're sewing, you're only stretching the elastic out and not the pants. And finally, sew the ends of the elastic together. For hidden elastic waistbands, you're gonna cut a strip of elastic to the size of your waist the same way as before. Find where the old elastic is sewn into the pants and cut a hole that is large enough to take out the old elastic and insert the new. You may need a seam ripper to detach the elastic from the pants. Be careful not to rip through the pants while removing the elastic. Attach a safety pin to one end of the new elastic. Insert it in the hole and start pushing the elastic through. Make sure the other end of the elastic stays outside of the pants for now. When you get the safety pin through to the other side, attach the two ends together with the pin. Make sure that your elastic is laying flat on the inside of the band. Using a needle and thread, sew the two ends together. 
Make this as flat as possible or else you'll be able to feel the seam. You can also use a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine to sew the ends together. Then put the elastic inside of the hole and stretch out the waistband. Sew the opening shut. And now your sweatpants are as good as new. Thanks for watching this OFS project. Like and subscribe to our channel for more crafting videos, tips, and tricks. See you next time. zip into this skirt, just a normal basic zip. Zip was busted, you'll find a lot of vintage stuff where the zips are broken, really quick repair job. And to do that you need to unpick the zip and take it out. And you need to join these two creases, the two seam lines, back together with a quick tacking stitch. What a tacking stitch is, is just a temporary stitch to hold things in place. So to do that, I need to turn it inside out. But what I do need to do is follow the crease line, so I'm stitching it together exactly as it should be. So it's best if you pin it first. So what I'm going to do is tack along that line. So I'll have to move the pins out as I go. So I'm just going to sew over a couple of times in that place to secure the end so it doesn't pull out. And great big stitches. It doesn't have to be neat and delicate because they're coming out at the end and it's really good to use a contrasting colour. So if you've got a pink cotton, that's fine, but as long as it's cotton. Okay, so we've got to the end. It's just holding that, that seam closed together, which is what we need. What we've done is close that seam up. So that's the seam there, and this is the zip. Okay, and that part of the zip is gonna lay on that seam here. And what we're going to do, this is the front of the zip, Okay, we're going to turn it over so the front of the zip is facing the inside of the skirt with the top edge at the top. So we're going to flip it over just like that. And we're going to match the zip line against the crease, the seam line of the back of the skirt. I'm just going to tack around the edge of the zip, holding it in position so that I can put it under the machine without the pins being in the way. You can take your time with this so that you get it exactly in the right position. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about these pieces because they're going to tuck in underneath. Once you've got it tacked in, then you can take the pins out. So we're going to turn it through to the right side and I need to get it under the machine. So you have to sort of fiddle around a bit, make sure you've got nothing trapped in the way. Quite difficult now to get past the, the zip head because it's quite bulky. Start a little bit lower down, then pull the zip down and then go back and finish that bit off afterwards. So you start sewing. My machine does an automatic back stitch for me, which is good. Some machines you have to press a little lever to make it do it. So just try and guide it as straight as possible. A little tip for turning the corner, you need to have the needle in the fabric because if I lift that now, the skirt will fall out. So you need to put the needle into the fabric before you turn the corner. There we go. Then I need to lift the foot up out the way, spin the skirt around so I can sew the next little seam. Okay, now I can sew straight across there and it'd be quite good to go backwards and forwards a little bit. It's pretty much there. Undo the, the tacking stitch through the middle, check that your zip works. There we are, we've got a new zip in the skirt. And now you can tidy it all up, take the uh, tacking stitches out and tack the lining back in place. Very simple job. <laughs>